Another greetings and salutations to all you hardcore MMA fans out there. This is another MMA technical analyst breakdown or the recap with your host here, Dan the Wolfman. And unlike all those other Monday morning analysts, I'm an actual technical MMA expert with four highly coveted black belts and I've been in the MMA game 32 years. Guys, I just did my very long video on UFC 226, so you're going to want to check that out. This video, I'm going to break down the Ultimate Fighter finale, which you guys are going to want to know who are the guys that are really going to make it in the future, and you're definitely going to want to hear about the dude in the main event that you missed that's going to be the next friggin' superstar. Friggin' amazing. You're going to want to listen to this just to get the details on that, and then I'll go into the PFL, which is kind of a new concept and point structure. If you aren't aware of it, I'll tell you about it. It's working out really well so far and a huge upset in that main event as well. So some stuff you missed this weekend so much that I'm doing two videos on. Okay guys, so let's start with the ultimate fighter finale. Uh, I'm in the prelims, I'm only gonna, I'm not even gonna cover all the fights, too much to cover. I'm just gonna talk about the, the standout techniques in the prelims. Mitchell versus Diamond. Mitchell, nice half guard sweep from bottom and uh, elbows when he had the triangle choke. Position on his back, he landed some nasty elbows. Uh, Diamond reverse from bottom to top twice by using the high elbow guillotine. We're going to see a theme here. He did it twice. We'll get more to that later. So two high elbow guillotine reversals already using those front headlock chokes. Like in my nine advanced guillotine video. That's very popular um, in order to get top position. Um, and of course, those weren't common, commentated on, uh, but we'll talk more about that uh, later in the main event. Uh, let's see, next, Pina, Pina versus Smolin. Pina, very nice striking from the outside. Tall, linky guy. I think he could go far. Um, and he got a kind of a strange high elbow. It was almost, it looked to me like a power assist. But he switched the grip, which is really that reverse grip for a high elbow, but it really wasn't a high elbow. But he kind of got that grip and then got it eventually rolled in a mount and got a high elbow guillotine for mount, basically. Looked a little weird, but basically a high elbow guillotine for mount or a reverse power assist prayer guillotine. However you want to think about that one. So um, with that kind of submission ability, but mostly his striking and his length, I think he could go far. Tough finale main card now, Julian Marquez versus Alessio Di Chiro, Di Chirico, Di Chirico. Fun fight, Alessio Di Chirico correctly winning the split decision with good southpaw counter striking by attack by drawing, one of the five ways of attack by Bruce Lee, JKD. Have very high fight IQ, doing the right thing at the right time, as well as four head outside single leg. Pulls him guy with the chain pull. Then misdirection as the guy hops, cuts to the far hip, and brings the double leg to the other direction. That's how three out of the four uh, he, finishes were on those, I believe. So, guys, with that kind of Machida-like striking precision, um, I think this guy can go for it. Definitely a guy I want to see again. So, uh, great job, Alessio Di Chirico. I'm not sure how to say it, but I'm going to go with that. Okay, uh, long time JMMA standout, Roxanne Matafari, 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 Roxanne Matafari versus Barb Honchek. Round one, good pairing and countering right hands by Honchek for the first half of the round. But then Ro Roxanne gets a takedown in half guard, um, even though Matafari or um, Barb gets the underhook, uses a very tight overhook wizard to control that half guard. You land the, the, the ground pound and the downward elbows, which stops all your deep half, uh, as well as your get-ups and stuff. So using that very strong wizard, it seems like something she almost purposely gave up in order to land ground and pound here. She knows she has good top control. Uh, Roxanne's come a very long way since moving to Vegas from Japan. So that stops the deep half and the getting up to dogfight. Barb got up to the dogfight at the very last second of the first round. Second round, uh, Honchek gets double underhooks, goes for her own outside leg trip. Barak sends years in Japan training with lots. They all, I, I've lived like a year and a half of my life in Japan. All those guys have great judo backgrounds. She's trained, uh, I believe, at Omigawa's Neo Judo. So she just instinctively, with that outside leg trip, turned in and boom, right in the mount. So th those years in Japan paid off here because now she's got mount. 
her mount control's gotten pretty sick and um, starts landing uh, beautiful ground pound from there mount control's beautiful uh, and elbows just elbows like crazy kind of like downward reverse elbows but she's done that in some of her recent fights so she's been doing it lately she's got another TKO in the second round great round uh, great good job Roxanne all right Alexis Car Alexis uh, Alex Caceres, excuse me, Alex Caceres versus Martin Bravo, my Greek brother with a beautiful Greek afro. Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres spent too much time on his back in the first round, but then he started to get the glow in the second round, hurting Bravo with multiple left crosses and even attempted the Suki Mountain Double Punch um, from ancient karate times that I've used in the spring a few times myself. Pretty cool. And uh, a spinning back fist. Uh, third round, Alex looks somewhat gassed and more off balance than usual, eating some big right hands. And I've always loved Caceres' JKD flow performance art that he goes out there to do, but he hasn't really evolved. He's the same dude that I saw at UFC on Fox 4. That was a long time ago. He hasn't really evolved. Three to six months of pure boxing gym or training with the Diaz brothers to do high volume boxing, get his balance, footwork, rolling with punches, defense. Uh, would go a long way. I've talked about this uh, in the UFC 226 video about the crouch guys could use better uh, boxing in the pocket, rolling with punches, not shying away from punches, keeping their eyes open. Um, but he won. Uh, but you know, he was against a guy that he should, at this point in his career, he should be like the guy in the main event we're going to get to. He should be pulling that kind of Matrix Anderson Silva like stuff off. So, uh, I love you, bro, but you, let's mix up something. Go to a different camp for three or six months. I'm not saying you got to leave your camp, but maybe do something to mix it up. You've plateaued your 30, and, you know, he was backyard fighting in Florida. He should be able to pick it up instead of just barely etching by guys. He should have he been up there right now. Okay. Jay Cuccinello versus Brad Katona. Brad Katona is your... Uh, Friendly, nerdy, uh, engineer, Canadian, Superman wannabe who uh, moved to straight by last jam Ireland. And Cuccinelli is your toughest balls, lived all, all over the world, brawler um, that spent time in places like Afghanistan. So, Katona lands a ton of calf kicks, which I've been preaching since 2012, of course, in my YouTube videos and on forums. And Cuccinello, much better job of keep, keeping his hands up. Before, he was, his hands were way down. He was drawing his hand way back here to punch and showing an uppercut boom and then getting hit. The guy was eating way too many punches. He made corrections. Sense tough. Um, but he did get knocked down for a quick second with a left hook. Round two, another Katona left hook. Quick drops Cuccinello. Boom, springs back up like a jack-in-the-box. And then Katona gets a double leg and stays mostly in the guard for the entire round. Kind of boring. Stays very low chest to chest. Round three, Katona gets takedowns, gets back, um, gets the back when Cuccinella needs to risk it and attempt to get back up because he knows he's going to lose. Commentators are coming about, talking about it. Finally, he did kind of give up his back, almost paid badly for it. Uh, but anyway, Katona becomes the featherweight tough champion by decision and may become another Canadian intellectual round winner uh, like GSP. So, uh, guy's muscular, uh, very smart dude, does the right thing at the right time. Not going to become Dana's favorite uh, fighting like he does though. So, he's going to have to go for it a bit more, but obviously the guy's skilled and he got the tough you know, championship, which is the main goal. So now he can start his UFC career. Probably locked into a three-year contract. Joe Giannetti versus Michael Trezano. Tough lightweight finale. Giannetti opens with kicks. Gets back. Uh, the back clinch and then plays footsies on the ground for a while. Kind of strangely looking. Guys looking for inside heel hooks and playing footsies. Trezano gets a uh, triangle end of the round but runs out of time. Round two, Giannetti shoots in, but Trezano pancake slams him down with a cow catcher and passes half into side. Giannetti throws his legs up and uh, from side mount, from bottom, kind of like reverse donkey guard kind of thing, uh, throws his legs up and it's kind of like what I talk about in my, the very end of my Josh Barnett versus here in Greasy breakdown. You might want to see that. Giannetti does go for a toe hold for a little while. It's really weird. Probably was looking at butt mount. Butt mount, 
boat mount is, uh, yeah, it doesn't look great. <sighs> you better go for a Russian cowboy double knee bar if you're going to do that and go for it quick. You don't want to sit there, the crowd's going to boo and call your names. Round three, Giannetti plays with body kicks, uh, baby kicks. He does baby leg kicks, baby baby body kicks. He's, he's running and kicking and doing nothing with those kicks. For the whole round, uh, don't know why. Throwing the, the fight away, don't know why, unless he doesn't want to get locked into a probably poor contract for three fights for three years, is what it used to be. A low amount of money, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I shouldn't insinuate that. I don't know. It looked friggin' weird. Maybe he got hurt. I don't know if there was a story. I didn't watch the press conference after. Uh, maybe there was some explanation for running away with baby kicks and letting you guys steal the round and the fight for you. Um, Trezano becomes the ultimate fighter in a very, very strange, poor-looking fight. So now we got Brad Tavares versus Israel Edesanya in the main event. Now this is what I was talking about you want to know about. Round one, Edesanya used speed and movement to matrix around like a prime Anderson Silva and even attempted an Imanari roll at the 10 second clacker. Didn't do a great job at it, but did it at the right time. Props, brother. Round two, more movement, fainting and picking from the outside by Adesanya, including a very rare rear lead sidekick to the face. Van Damme blood sport style. And a nasty liver kick and a beautiful tie dump throw using the energy and kicking out that ankle. Letting him trip over you, basically. A beautiful tie dump there. Tavares did land some solid jabs, though. Tavares is, is technically sound dude. Hands up, moves good. Tough dude. Another round to Adesanya. Round three in clinch while being pushed back. Adesanya fails his second tie dump attempt. But then while moving backwards, grabs the throat. He moves his left leg forward, hits that Osotogari while moving backwards. Now this is just like my grabbing the throat of sword guardy defense to a jab video that got popular a couple months ago. This dude did it while moving backwards. Okay? This is some some stuff. This fight's amazing. This fight I saved on my DVR versus like all the other prelims and stuff. So, um, awesome stuff. Um, later out of Sunday catches a front kick and goes into a spinning elbow off the front kick, on bonk style, like my own bonk, catching a round kick, kick defense video. So he caught a front kick, boom, spinning elbow off of that. Um, some Tony Jaw action for you. Um, this guy knows how to get the crowd exciting, kind of doing some antics, playing with his hair, and like pointing at stuff. 15 seconds later, Tavares hits a snap vertical up jab, vertical punch. Okay, and he kind of just snapped it out really fast, almost downward like... So he snap jabs him, and that kind of piss uh, Adesanya off, it seemed like. Because Adesanya, like, sees everything. He's got very good eyes. And this, like, hit him, and he didn't see it coming, I think. So instantly the guy goes from playing at really outside distance to dropping his chin and moving in just a little bit more. And the dude's going for the finish for the next month. Watch that. That whole last minute is friggin' exciting. Uh, great MMA action. Moves him closer, tries to finish for that entire last minute. Um, so, like, a, a, a switch flip from play to end time. But he just wasn't able to end it. Round four, Adesanya, big brother, forehead grabs. Literally, big brother uses that, that dollars in reach. Forehead grabs him and tries to front kick him in the face. Uh, Tavares does finally get a single leg in a guard. Uh, Israel throws up a triangle. Tavares passes back to the feet. Adesanya summons his Sakuraba versus Henzo and whips him from the back. He gets a Kimura while his back is kind of half taken. Whips the very strong Tavares to the ground with the double wrist lock, tries to put it behind his back, ends that using that grip uh, just as one grip as a seatbelt. Tavares is seated, lands about five or six punches in like a seated ground and pound position. <sighs> Good stuff. Adesanya um, lands some more elbows on the feet, cutting up Tavares. Round five, Adesanya decides he wants to play on the ground. He's like, you know, we haven't really gone there yet. Let's go there. So after, after defending a uh, shot, he snaps down Tavares to an instant quick kill attack. High elbow guillotine turning him to his back, just like my instant quick four kill uh, front headlock to like guillotine and stuff video. My quick kill, f quick four kill video, I forget what it's called. But I show that in there, that's exactly what he did. Snap down from standing to the high elbow. And um, Tavares kind of uh, turtles down, looks for a rolling knee bar, 
uh, but but he sees it coming early. He gets really heavy on the knee, and then eventually um, Tavares starts to get the angle on it, starts to leg lace the leg, and then he does my knee strike, my, my leg lock defense video, knee strike walks out of it. Um, considering that this guy's from New Zealand, I don't know, you know, call, call it what you get. Well, guys, he might actually watch some of my videos or maybe one of his coaches or teammates does. I um, mean, it's very possible. It's not like they have a lot of high-level uh, stuff over there. So maybe he's got, between the MNRE role and the way he defended this and the spinning elbow, like, I mean, the guy's a great kickboxer. I'm not saying that. But um, interesting stuff that, he, that he's doing, that, that snapped on high elbow team. So truly, he, he did it a second time. So... Um, after two good leg kick kicks, Tavares is very frustrated, he's all bloody, takes his bloody snot and literally throws it on Hassani, who gives him the bird, rightfully so. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, gross. And then, uh, ten seconds less, Tavares shoots, Adesani again, pushing the head to the ground, and then goes high elbow, turns on the back, tries to finish the high elbow guillotine again. For the fourth time, for the fourth time again in the night, Jimmy Smith doesn't call a high elbow guillotine. Um, so a truly amazing performance from the undefeated 14-0 Israel Adesanya by unanimous decision, 50-45 on two cards, 49-46 uh, on the other. Shout out, uh, shout out over the highly ranked and very skilled Brad Tavares. He's the next Anderson Silva, guys. He's the real Matrix star out there. He's the superstar that UFC is going to need. All these other guys are retiring. Um, keep an eye out. And uh, anyway, guys, now on to the PFL. PFL, uh, really neat uh, kind of rebranding. Uh, and I'm digging it so far. I'm digging it. This point structure. They're in a tournament, six weight classes. The winner at the end of the year on New Year's gets a million bucks. Um financially maybe that means I get a hold on a lot of money for longer and make interest on it or whatever anyway uh, but really neat point structure you win a fight you get three uh, points if you finish in the first round you get six finish in the second you get five finish in the third you get four points if you finish by decision you win by decision you get three points you the whoever gets the points are the guys who end up going to the, the like real real part of the tournament um, Finals, quarterfinals, uh, etc. So, Howard versus Ulitov, middleweight. Um, you see that Howard relaxed and in control, clips him with the right hook off break. Ulitov lands a mid power left high kick and clutch. Uh, Howard lands a left hook on the break and gets an ankle pick takedown against Cage at the end of the round. What a break. Ah. Round number two, nice punch blitz to double leg against the cage to back take for a little while. And um, when Ulitov sat up quick, Howard snatches a, a short choke. They had the back control. And Ulitov finally like, sits up really hard and boom, he can grab that short choke, snatch that neck, and gives a second round finish. And therefore, five points to the newly diagnosed father of three, John Howard. So congrats, John Howard. Shamil Gumzatov, 11-0, combat sambo background from Dagestan versus Eddie Gordon, 8-4. Gordon lands right hand, Gumzatov jab hook, combo and some inside leg kicks. Gumzatov shoots at waist but too high, been over too much easily stuff. Gumzatov lands front kick to the face but gets countered with a big overhand right. Gumzatov finally lands the left high kick that I was yelling at the TV earlier in the round four, and Gordon's uh, hunched over stance opens him up to the left high kick, so that's why I was yelling for it, because he's hunched over boxing like and eating leg kicks and head kicks. Uh, you got to fight with structure in MMA, you can't fight uh, that boxing style. Um, uh, da, 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 outside single leg, uh, but Gordon pops right back up, Gavin Zatov lands more aggressive at the end of the round. Land some punches and almost a double flying knee. Round two, gums tough land jabs, low kicks, and good left hook. Both guys back up towards cage too much. They walk themselves back up to the cage way too much. Uh, very amateurish. Another head outside single to the top half guard by Gumzatov. Good scramble by Gordon up to the clinch. Gumzatov lands punches and plumb knees on the hunched over Gordon who gives up the structure. Then Gordon lands overhead on the bell. Um Gordon seems to do way too much boxing, not enough kickboxing. Um, 
round one close, you either tie or to Gamzatov round two, you clearly Gamzatov round three. Gamzatov, pick scored in par all around, the, the, though he's getting backed up the cage and cornered too much. Gordon, pretty inaccurate and sloppy, and they'll went for it at the end with punches. 38 to 29 total punches landed uh, for Gamzatov. 31 to one leg kicks landed by Gamzatov. Uh, two judges give it 29-28. One judge give it 30-27. 30-27, excuse me, for the undefeated Gamzatov moving to 12 and 0. But that only gets you three points, homie, and that's not enough to really get the job done. Make sure you're in the in, in the the real big tournament, the, the, the you know towards the end. Um. Yeah, backs up too much, leans uh, and uh, leans over the waist too much, getting takedowns, reaching and diving does Gamzatov. So he's got some things to work on, um, but does have a future. Rick Story versus Yuri Villaford at welterweight. 1919, 19 and nine stories back after a two-year layoff. Versus eleven and five Villaford. Villaford gets surprising double leg to side on Story right away. Right away, right off the takedown to side, uses that energy, goes for my front row pass just like I teach. And my, uh, what do I call a series? My um, non-traditional side mount and side control escape series. There's like six videos I filmed in Puerto Rico. That's one of them. Immediately did it. Hits that funk roll. And comes out on top eventually. Uh, back on the feet. Story blasts little punches. Single leg. You know, I'm going to skip over this. Story comes in Terminator like for the whole fight. And uh, does a lot of good body punching. He's slap footed. He's plotting. But he's a Terminator. Shows heart and determination. Comes forward. Uh, lands a bunch of uh, punches on the ground, lands up in half guard twice, looks for his instructor, Fabiano Schirner's, Schirner, Gracie Baja Portland shout out, looks for his, uh, Schirner's likes to really set up that double wrist like Kamura on half guard, and he was looking for that. Uh, gets three quarter mount, but Villefort escapes back up at the end of the fight for the second time out the back door, 30-27, unanimous decision for Rick Story, but that only gets him three points, and there's guys that got uh, six, five, four points uh, ahead of him. So, good comeback, though, from Story, who, you know, hasn't fought for two years. So, uh, Rick Story's uh, still got it. Um, not sure if he could work on his movement uh, a bit, or if now later in his career, uh, kind of plotting and having the Terminator and take shots to give shots is, is where he's going to be. But we'll see. But based on grit and punching power and wrestling, he might, he might be able to get by some guys. Okay, I'm going to call him the Amazing Abu. Amazing Abu Nurmagomedov, the cousin of Khabib. The cousin of Khabib versus Pablo Kush. Uh, Pablo Kush, 22 and 5, 3 KOs, 19 subs, versus the 14 1 Nurmag Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov. Let's call him Amazing Abu. 7 KOs and 3 subs. Kush won, won over Nurmagomedov in the amateur 7 years ago. Ago um, and he opens up with a wild punch exchange to clinch. Uh, does amazing Abu. He looks better on the feet. Then they stall on the Greco clinch for a while, just holding on to the ref breaks him. Lands a left high kick at the end of the round, round two. Wild telegraph hands by Kush, but then he lands four uppercuts, both rear and lead. Out of nowhere, four uppercuts basically in a row. Friggin' knocks down Khabib's cousin and takes his back for the rear naked choke win in the second round, winning five points. And it uh, kind of, you know, seemed like an upset comeback um, in a fight that definitely did not seem like it could possibly even go his way, even though he won in the amateur seven years earlier. So, uh, hey, submission is machine. Pablo Kush, now at 20 submissions. That's high, man. That's high in a young career. 20 subs. That's real high. There's not a lot of guys doing that. We don't know how uh, good his early opponents were. But still, keep an eye on the guy. Okay, in the main event, Jake Shields, legend, 32, 9, 1 and 1, taking on Ray Cooper. That's the son of Ray Broder, Broder Cooper at Walter Wait, Ray Cooper the third. I used to watch Ray Broder Cooper, you know, Super Brawl days, I believe, in Hawaii. Jake Shields fought his father, went 1 and 1 14 plus years ago. So, interesting story to this one. Cooper catches inside kick and shields and takes him down, which is kind of surprising. Gets him.